Hi there and welcome to another workout for you to row along to. Now we're continuing the performance prep plan. This is a plan that if you've not been really doing performance rowing for a while and you just want to sharpen up, this is one to just get in and it'll hopefully just kind of crank everything up, sharpen it, ooh, here we go, very nice, and get you ready to then go into something bigger and faster, all right? Now today's workout is going to be six four minute intervals with three minutes rest in between and your intensity is going to be really up there. You're going to be like hitting that kind of nine or ten out of uh, ten by the time you get to the end of this session. It's probably not going to feel like that from the start, but it is by the end. Now, if you want some kind of a pace guide, if you have a 2K training pace, then do this round about 2K plus 2 to 5, depending on where your performance lies. Or if you did session 1, I want you to take the average that you did that session 1 at and add 2 or 3 seconds to it, right? So I did it at around about an average of 147, so I'm going to plan to do today's at around about 150 pace. But don't worry about my pace, it's all about you, not about me. Don't try and chase my pace, chase your own pace. All right, hey. So we're going to get into a four minute warm up. I've been speaking for like, less talking, more rowing. Four minute, four minute warm up before we get started. Then we have to set up our machine first. Oh, who forgets about that? So, on the concept two, head to the front and set your drag factor to where you want it to be. If you have no idea where you want it to be, set the lever between four and five, all right? Because too low isn't a problem, too high is when it becomes a problem in terms of technique and stuff. If you're in a non-concept two, so the same goes for when it comes to resistance. <laughs> it's that you don't want it too high because then you have to tug against it. Um, and so, you, yeah, so you want a nice feel, but not too high. Next up, uh, if you can, please adjust your monitor so it's at eye height, so you don't have to look up, you don't have to look down. And finally, if you're able to adjust the height of your foot stretchers, set them to a place where you're able to come into the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically comfortably, all right? If you're set too high, you can be all bound up and it's a little bit tough and your heels come up and, I don't know, cats marry dogs and stuff. If you're set too low, then your toes can fall out and you go scooting in front and you headbutt the monitor. Nobody wants that. I don't think that's ever happened, but I was trying to think of the consequence of having your feet too low and that's the one. I'm speaking at a million miles an hour because I want to get into this row, so we're going to do, do this four minute warm up at a nice gentle pace. It's a warm up, you're going to build yourself up through this four minutes. Remember, the last two minutes are single leg drills, so for, use the first two minutes to build yourself up, all right? Just follow me, it's fine. Here we go. In three, two, one, take off. Hey, so I'm starting this at a nice gentle pace because it's a warm up, right? Doing it at 20 strokes a minute. I'm thinking about technique but forwards tilt into the front of the machine with arms straight and a good posture. And then I'm pushing out from the front. At the same time, the handle connects to the flywheel or the water wheel or the hamster wheel or the Ferris wheel or whatever wheel you have, the steering wheel, whatever you've got in your machine. And then you pull in to a finish at the back of the stroke. You're not pulling from the front. And once you've got that kind of sequencing down, you can start to increase the pressure, how much you're pushing with your legs, which will send your drive speed a little bit quicker. And you'll find you're going a little bit faster. Now, I don't want you to go too fast so that you can't make <laughs> the end of these first two minutes, but you do want to make sure you're getting warmed up. So make sure you're putting a good push from the legs. I'm around about 203, which is about 20 seconds slower than my, or about, I don't know what is it? I want to say it's probably about 15 seconds slower than my 2K right now. So I got my maths wrong there. And of course, if you don't feel by the end of this warm up, that you're warm enough for an intense session today, please carry on warming up. Maybe in between the end of the warm up and when I get started, it's usually about a minute. So you can carry on rowing through that if you wish. And in two strokes time, I'm gonna take one foot out and put it on the ground. You don't have to, of course, and carry on rowing. You can carry on rowing and warming yourself up. You don't have to do these single leg drills. I just do this to open my hips up a little bit and get into the positions a little bit more comfortably. With just one leg in. You don't have two legs strapped in. It's a little bit easier to get forwards and backwards. Pretty handy if you've hurt one of your legs as well, to be honest. Let's swap feet. I never tried doing a full row 
with only one leg strapped in. But Will on the Facebook group today posted a question about rowing with one leg in. I'm sure I could. Just rock onto your toes, onto your heels, onto your toes, onto your heel. Yeah. Okay, two more here, and we're gonna put both feet back in. Keep those legs straight, and then roll with your back and arms. So you swing back over your hips, pull in your arms, out with your arms, and then rock forwards over your hips again. And it's really important that pickup of the power with your back first, and it's just as important to get the arms away before your forward rock again. Really helps your technique, drive length, power, all that kind of stuff. One more here. And let's roll to the front with the arms straight and a forward tilt and push out from the front, holding those arms straight and a forward tilt. Because this gets you used to the sensation of pushing out of the front with your legs and not pulling early, okay? Because the power comes from your legs. And if you've got that forwards tilt, that helps with your drive length. All this kind of stuff all comes together. I'm not just a deranged man talking rubbish. Well, <laughs> warm-up's over. I am a deranged man talking rubbish, but some of it's actually accurate when it comes to rowing. So keep on moving up and down the rail, have a quick drink. I will quickly describe one more time what it is we're doing today. And if you want to carry on rowing to help yourself warm up, please do pause the video, do what you wish. I will get started very soon. Okay then, so today's workout is gonna be six four minute intervals with three minutes rest in between. Now even looking at this session, that three minute rest very much indicates that the four minutes you're gonna be working hard because you've got three minutes to recover before the next one. So your intensity is really gonna be up there, okay? This is, should be one of the ones where you really have to push yourself to keep on going through each of these four minute intervals. So your pace is gonna be up, like I say, I'm gonna be around about three seconds slower than the average of session one, which is like up at that kind of 2K pace-ish, all right? So if you wanna work from a 2K point of view, your kind of 2K plus two to five would kind of be around about where you are from pace here, all right? It just make sure and put in a lot of effort. That's really what it comes down to. Don't worry too much about pace. Your heart rate should be up, the power should be up. My stroke rate is probably gonna be around about 26 to 28. Who knows, I might slow down because I've not been doing any high rate um, stuff for a while. So I might go, oh, especially because I'm having to talk to you all the whole time. I don't have to talk to you. Let's just get that right. I choose to talk to you. So, are you okay? Are you ready to go for this? You've had a drink, you've wiggled your backside to make sure you're comfortable. So it's four minutes, we're gonna do this. Um, six times, two minutes rest. You good for this? Okay. Here we go then, in three, two, one. And we're off. <sighs> so get a good power from the legs to get the stroke rate up. And then try and settle in to the pace that you want to do this row at. So I'm aiming for 150 and I'm currently bang on at 27 strokes per minute. Now, I'd suggest just falling into rhythm with me as it'll make it a little bit more comfortable to watch the video if that's what you're doing. And after all, these higher intensity sessions should be about power and stroke rate. So to lower stroke rate, you're probably having to overpower each stroke. And to higher stroke rate, you're possibly overgunning it. So, like I said, I'm gonna try and hover between 26 and 28. Which kind of does bring back something about the fact that this plan was originated using the chat GPT uh, artificial intelligence thing. Oh, hang on, two minutes gone. 
and although it quite happily laid out the workouts to do, which is what we're following, it didn't give any kind of pace guide or stroke rate guidance. But that's not really the major flaw with using AI to make it for you. The major flaw is there's no one to talk to. <laughs> No one to keep you honest. No one to compare results. No one to ask. And really, I believe that's the biggest benefit of having a coach is somebody to ask someone who will tell you you're slacking off someone that you don't want to let down by rowing too slowly or missing a session you don't get that from AI okay 10 seconds Whew. One more stroke. There we go. So yeah, 150.1 for me through that one. Whew. And it was definitely times in that that was like, <sighs> I really do make this hard on myself by choosing to speak, talk my way through them, but like I said before, it's tough to talk and row at the same time, but the benefits from a cardio point of view, from how my lungs have to work to transport oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide, and amongst the fact I'm holding my breath while I'm talking to you, that has to pay off in the end, doesn't it? Okay, have a drink. Especially in these tough sessions, hydration is so important. You don't want to get to a point where you were working hard, but your body starts to kind of, it goes into panic because you're dehydrated. And remember, water is often not enough. Uh, yes, your body needs water, no one's saying that, but uh, especially when you're working hard and you're sweating hard. I'm lucky it's still like five degrees here, so I'm not particularly uh, breaking out into a sweat yet, but I will by the end. Um, but yeah, if you're sweating, you're losing a lot of salts, a lot of electrolytes as well. So it really is worthwhile every now and then at least putting in some kind of electrolytes into your, your water bottle. Now, there is that balance of um, too much salts can be bad for you in terms of blood pressure and uh, all that stuff. So of course, if you're going to start changing what you're doing, please speak to a doctor. In fact, even before doing a roll like this, which is a bit late because we're four months into it, if, you're, if you've not done an intense workout before, please speak to your doctor rather than just listen to some Scottish idiot. I'm just rowing this and saying, if you want to roll along with me, please do. But yeah, so it's the same with the electrolytes thing. If, you're, if you have like blood pressure problems or whatever, speak to a doctor first. But the, the truth is, is as you're working out, you're losing salts. And so you have to get them back in somehow. Um, I think it's more if you're just sitting on the couch at home watching television with a glass of wine and a bag of crisps and you're just ramming, <laughs> ramming salt into your system. That's a problem. Whereas if you're sweating out all this sodium and whatever. Potassium, do you sweat out potassium? Anyway. So I use the electrolytes from bulk powders. There's no affiliate link because I'm not an affiliate. Just telling you, I use their electrolytes and their BCAAs. All right, 15 seconds to go until the next one. Uh, 10 seconds to go. If you want to do some light rowing to get the flywheel moving, then please do. Otherwise, five, four, three, two, one, go. 
let's try and get back into the same rhythm that we were in last time so get that power in try and hit the same stroke rate I really do think about drive speed being the governor of stroke rate but a good powerful drive that's what gets the stroke rate up and then a slower recovery before recording this video tonight I made by hope is a short video about how to get power the secret of how you get power into the concept too and how it really does come down to your body position to help with drive length and then the amount of push the amount of power you put into your drive speed or the drive let's say which increases drive speed means the flywheel wants to move faster wants to push more air out the way and therefore because of the drag factor calculation in the monitor it knows that you're putting in more oomph and that is how you go faster incidentally for all those people that like to know about this stuff the monitor actually calculates your drag factor from the deceleration of the flywheel the quicker it decelerates the more air must be getting in and so the higher the drag factor okay one minute to go I seem to have slowed to 25 strokes a minute sorry too busy talking about drag factor <laughs> keep that power coming from the legs remember it's easy to overcompensate and start pulling early with the arms if fatigue sets in but try not to you want to keep nice straight arms at the front as you push with the legs one more oh. Oh. yeah I lost a second due to my stroke rate coming down because the thing is I've whether it's a bad thing or not I've just kind of got into the habit of I push it a certain amount at every stroke rate depending on the intensity I think I'm supposed to be rowing at so although if I was doing a half marathon I'd also still be rowing at 20 strokes a minute or 26 sorry strokes a minute I wouldn't be rowing well not nowadays anyway at 151 pace I'd probably be closer to 158 maybe 159 uh, so you do have to think about the world you're in so I have like a intensity at low rate 
that kind of perceived effort. So I know how much effort I'd be putting in at 18 or 20, 22, 24 for a low effort row. Once you get above 24, it's just kind of hard to do a low intensity uh, at that pace because of the drive speed you need in order to get up at that stroke rate. So it gets a little bit tougher. But once I'm, if I'm doing 20 to let's say 28, at a medium intensity, which would be kind of round about that uh, half marathon, for most of it would be at a medium intensity and then you'd crank it up into high intensity towards the end because you can't go max the whole way. Um, and that's the whole point, remember, that medium intensity is not five out of 10. Medium intensity is one where you're really having to push and hold on and kind of like, oh, I don't know if I can make this. Your low intensity is five out of 10. That's the one where it's like, I say it's like walking up a, a constant flight of stairs where it gets harder as you're gonna go higher. Your heart rate's getting up, your breathing rate's getting up, and you have to kind of slow down how many steps you're kind of climbing up in order to kind of keep yourself in an equilibrium. That's what that kind of five out of 10 um, intensity is. So you're working, you're still working. Everything's still kind of going, oh, something's going on. But um, low intensity is not like one out of 10, la 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 la, okay? It's a little bit tricky way to explain it. If you go, the whole one to 10 thing, but you understand what one out of 10 is. You understand what 10 out of 10 is. It's the greatest <laughs> numbers in between. Have a drink. We've only got 36 seconds to go until the next one. Oh, 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, you can kind of get tied up in knots when it comes to training. And it's partly this also, um, in fact, I'll talk about this during the, ne the next interval. 15 seconds to go until the next one. If you want to start that light rowing to get the flywheel moving, then please do. 10 seconds. Ah, oh, okay, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Remember, try and get up to stroke rate and pace as quick as you can. So yeah, I, talking about coaches and about how it's useful to have one to keep you honest, to ask questions of, to make sure you're doing the sessions and all that kind of stuff. You also need to find someone who puts the parameters of your role in a way that you relate to. So. Like when I was talking in the opening about 2K times, using a two kilometer average, like time trial average pace, is a really good way to set intensities for people if they've done a 2K <laughs> or if they have any desire to do one. But the problem is the people who either haven't done one or have no desire to do one or even new rowers who frankly their performance is quite erratic in terms of the power they put in from day to day. So you ask somebody new to do a 2K Maybe on a Monday, it takes them nine and a half minutes. But then come Thursday, when they're not shaking off the weekend, they've been eating a little better, they're a bit more confident. They're rowing it at nine minutes, five pace. There's a huge difference between the two. So, 2K pacing can be very inaccurate. And I'm saying this as someone who, with the hundreds of workouts I have here on this channel, they're pretty much all use a 2k pace to describe your intensity. I do usually add in effort out of 10 or you should 
be able to talk during this one or don't even bother trying that kind of stuff so if you feel that a training plan kind of alienates you because of how it sets the intensity speak to your coach don't just walk away explain it to them and then let that conversation be what guides your decision <laughs> if they don't agree or don't care then you leave okay where are we 10 seconds to go three two one three down three to go we're at the Bon Jovi point we're halfway there I have to start giving him royalties soon <laughs> the amount that I talk about but hey I'll make it a promo Bon Jovi slippery will win slippery will win <laughs> I can't say it slippery when wet in fact a <laughs> slight diversion I usually I haven't so far in this plan I usually give out a hashtag at the end for people to uh, stay honest because I'm talking about honesty there's no way because you watch the video and how do I know you've done the whole session so I tend to throw out a hashtag at the end um, which I know you can cheat and skip to but nobody would do that would they um, to keep you honest so you do that uh, and I haven't the first couple of sessions of this plan because frankly I forgot so today I'm going to give it at this point at the Bon Jovi point and the hashtag is going to be slippery when wet there we go I said it this time uh, yeah and people go what? but most people who who watch these videos and are used to me saying we're at the Bon Jovi point when we get halfway they'll go oh he's all about it again all right good old dad joke if it's worth if it's worth saying once it's worth saying a few times so I'm just messing with them now microphone cable um, but yeah slippery when wet Bon Jovi 1987 6 I can't think what year it would have been oh sorry about that if you just saw a little bit of flesh this isn't my only fans page <laughs> um, uh, yeah slippery when wet Bon Jovi it was like the, their album that launched them into the stratosphere they'd already had a couple of albums well, they had um, Bon Jovi Bon Jovi they had the first one then they had 7900 degrees Fahrenheit I think was the second one and that it, I only learned um, a few weeks ago it's the temperature that rock melts at hey rock uh, yeah um, yeah anyway and then and then I think it came don't, don't think there was another one in between maybe there was in which case sorry Bon Jovi but then you had Slippery When Wet which completely transformed them lots of hair lots of music and some great, great music in it. Not just lots of music, but great music. I was a huge Bon Jovi fan back then. It had nothing to do with the fact that uh, my sister and all her friends liked Bon Jovi, and so therefore I was just assaulted by it all the time. It's like Stockholm Syndrome. I either had to like it or not go and... And when you're, listen, when you're a 12-year-old boy sitting around with 16-year-old girls, you like the music that the 16-year-old girls... Sorry, but it's the 12-year-old boy going through the change. I hope you'd understand. Right, 12 seconds to go. I'm such a boy. Six seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Maybe I'm just a dinosaur. Still talking about boys and puberty and wanting to be around girls. Maybe you're not allowed to talk about those things nowadays. Right, I'll try and get my stroke rate up into that 27 area again. I've kind of slacked off in the last one again. But it's an interesting way, just going back to power and stroke rate and stuff. If you do see your stroke rate just drop, don't think about your pace. Think about pushing a little harder with your legs in order to get stroke rate up and you should 
notice that your pace goes one or two seconds faster with it because after all you have to put in more power to have a faster drive speed and then that results in one two however many clicks you've gone up extra strokes per minute which if you're averaging say 10 meters per stroke 20 meters a minute faster can be one or two seconds on your pace but a lot of this all comes down to consistency making sure that you have as good as the same technique at 24 strokes a minute as you do at 28 if you lose the connection from legs to arms as you raise the rate then you're not quite going to get that progression it's the same with slide length how far forwards you slide into the catch if you start choking the slide in order to raise the rate then your stroke length or your drive length will reduce and you won't be putting the power in over the same amount of length Whew. okay 25 <laughs> you can tell when I start to get a bit fatigued because I kind of drift off with what I'm saying I'm not really <laughs> not really hit a point 10 seconds oh, two more strokes one more oh, there we go oh, that's better I was back to 26, 27 on that one too busy talking about Bon Jovi and things in the interval before what was that all about? <laughs> oh so just going back to the whole AI plan thing the point I'm trying to make is that although I typed into chat GPT please design me a plan 10 day plan for someone wanting to return to rowing performance okay and it gave me a week's worth of sessions a couple of rest days five sessions a week uh, which you then repeat to make it two weeks uh, and it's a very simple setup they're all made up of rows that you'll see either that I've already done here on row along or that someone else has done or another coach has got in their plan or whatever because that's how chat GPT works so basically just hoovers information collates it and then spits it back out of the it's not particularly intelligent it just regurgitates uh, and so it gives you the plan and then it just sits there and it's then up to somebody to describe it nurture it move it drive it into uh, people so that you can look at it and go all right this is what I'm supposed to do and then it's down to you to actually attach to it and in fact and actually attack it if that's a better word to sit on this session and say right it's saying this is originally six times 1k not four minutes but from a roll on point of view we have to do it this week because otherwise we'll both finish at different times but you can easily just sit down and go six times 1k and just limp back and forwards 
get that 1K done, walk away, and you've not really put in the intensity, because this is meant to be like a high-end intensity row. So because the AI thing didn't say that, it's quite easy to phone in these sessions. Have a drink. Which again, is why a good coach is important. Because then it's someone that you can get in touch with and you can say, this is what I did. And again, I understand the irony of this, the fact that I'm saying all this and we don't really have a two-way conversation here. Apart from the fact you can leave me comments. Oh, oh it's seven o'clock. It's time to drink water. <laughs> um, uh, you can leave me comments in the YouTube video or you can uh, email me or you can join the Facebook group and let me know how you got on. So, And I will respond, I hope. YouTube comments, I've got a little bit slack on them, I'm afraid, sorry. Um, just because there's so many of them. But the Facebook group and email, I definitely do, so. And then you can say, this is how I got on, how do you think? And I'll let you know, 15 seconds to go. Got 15 seconds to go. I got 15 seconds to go. Tentacle. Tentacle. Oh dear. Right, five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Here we go with our fifth interval. So two more to go. Like I say, intensity wise, you should really be getting up there now. that these two intervals are going to be very tough. First couple might have been easy tough, as in you're able to recover quite well in between them. The middle two, you'll have failed to get up in terms of intensity, but then these last two, because the intensity, the overall intensity is up there now, and your recovery even over those three minutes wouldn't have been quite as good as at the start of the session in order to hold the same stroke rate and pace your perceived exertion, your intensity here will well, will hopefully feel tougher. And I say hopefully because if it doesn't, you've not been working hard enough. So I suggest increasing your pace for the rest of the session or add on another interval or just come back tomorrow and do the same session but overall a little bit faster two minutes to go because huh. it's an interesting plan this one where everyone may be coming to it in a slightly different state of preparedness like I say this is meant to be like a filler plan to get you ready for something bigger. So I've been training for the past almost five months for high rocks. And although that still had a lot of rowing, it wasn't really performance rowing and it certainly wasn't performance endurance like this where you have to hold a really tough pace for longer than is comfortable and that's the point of a session like this is that you need to maintain discomfort 
10 seconds to go. Three, two, one. Ah. Ah. Can't remember the exact title of it, but Doug got in touch in a YouTube comment yesterday, I think, or the day before, and asked if I'd read the book, The Death by Comfort? I think that's what it was, by Paul Taylor, who I assume is the Paul Taylor that I've spoken about before, the mind, body, brain. <laughs> My head's gone tonight. Podcast guy that I used to live in the flat below him. It just so happens that he's also a fantastic, kind of, what do you call him, sports motivation? I guess. If he's not just sports, he's kind of, he does all these kind of TED Talk type things where it's all about motivation in the workplace and stuff, but uh, I listen to him from a kind of a sports point of view. But yeah, it's, it might not be death by comfort, but I'm pretty sure it is. But the whole point being that if you're just sitting in your comfort zone, yeah, you're comfortable, but if you're looking to improve, you're never gonna improve from comfort. You can hit stasis, most likely you're gonna go downhill within comfort because you're always searching for something that's easy. So the easiest way to go easy is to do a little less than you did before. <laughs> so if you sat down and you did this at two minutes pace um, and you were actually slacking off, but at, by the end of it, you got to the end of the row and you're like, you know what, I thought two minutes would have been easy. I would have been in my comfort zone, but actually oh, it's quite tough. I'm gonna come back and do that again, but I'm gonna do it at two or five next time. I'm gonna ease off to really be in my comfort zone. And so that's where your gradual decline, what way you're looking at me, where way it goes, comes from. So that comfort zone is really, really uh, destructive. So, and flipping it, have a drink, one minute. When you get out of your comfort zone, when you're discomfort, when you embrace the discomfort, like my t-shirt says, not this one, but another one I've got, that's where improvements come from. Uh, if the, the, the longer you can hold, extreme discomfort, <laughs> the more like you are, likely you are to beat someone who's identical to you who just doesn't have that tolerance for discomfort. And I think that's what, back in my racing days, what I was able to do, I could go at the same pace, but for longer than say someone like Luis or Tim or Anton, who are all kind of, we're all around about the same, or Guy, we're all in the same bracket, but I was able to just hold that nastiness a little bit longer. And that's why I was winning the golds and they were getting the, Silvers, apart from Tim Mail, who he always won the gold, but he was, he was and is superhuman, so. Hey Tim, <laughs> five, four, three, two, one, go. I say hey Tim, but there's absolutely no way on this earth that he'd strap himself in and do a little row along with me. It was, it was interesting, actually, because Back when, in my kind of racing days when I was winning the competitions I turned up to, I was, well, this is gonna sound big headed, but I was the guy to beat. I'd turn up to the Scottish champs or the English champs. And people would be like, oh, you're here, all right, we're racing for silver then. And it was, an interesting pressure being the top guy, being the one who I was always being chased right from the start of a race. I was out in front and I had Tim and that's Tim Cox, not Neil, and Luis, Anton, Guy few others they were all chasing me so from a headspace point of view there's a real nervousness about trying to stay ahead of people but then every time I went to the British indoor championships Tim Mail 
was there. And he was light years. We were all doing kind of 637 down to 650 for a 2K. Tim was low 620s, if not faster. And so suddenly when he was there, I was part of that group that were now saying, all right, we're racing for silver. And then it became about a chase who could get close enough to Tim to make sure you were far ahead enough from everybody else which is a completely different mindset if only because if you're in the lead and you suddenly blow up then that's what's happened you blew it you blew your race whereas if you're in third place and you try to catch the guy or girl in second place and you blow up doing so everyone says what a valiant effort so it's yours to lose when you're the best all right three two one oh that confession the reason that I ended up being that kind of a story was just to distract myself oh, to get through those last four minutes so oh, I hope it worked the distraction that is for you too because it certainly got me to the end talking about myself because <laughs> I'm so awesome Oh dear. I feel bad for... Sorry, I, was, I wasn't checking my email. I was loading up a two-minute cool down. I feel bad for people who don't get or like my humour. Although, to be fair, I think if you don't get or like my humour, you're unlikely to come back for a, sec for a second session, are you? Like, hmm, I wonder if he's better this time. They'd come on and go, no, he's still the same. Okay. Two minute cool down, do this at whatever pace is going to help you cool down, okay? So start at a pace, gradually ease off over the two minutes. This one you want to hit your comfort zone, all right? Here we go, three, two, one. Let's cool down. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. <sighs> I know I've got a niche. So I was talking about this weekend, the Steady State podcast is releasing an episode <laughs> they gave me, it was supposed to be for almost two hours, which I don't think the podcast is going to last two hours, but hey, they gave me a lot of time to just talk. Uh, and uh, I kind of, I was talking about, because they obviously was from a roll along perspective, and they were saying, why do you think it's, it works? And I mean, you compare me to, in fact, I'll say their names. I'll say their names, but like Austin from Training Tall or Shane from Dark Horse. I'm minuscule compared to them. If you look at their subscribers, their viewing numbers and whatever, they're stratospheric compared to me. I don't even register to them. I'm like tiny little small fry boy. This little Scottish voice. There's a little set of bagpipes in the background. They're like... Who's the guy that talks nonsense? As they're taking their tops off and their pecs are glistening off the camera and people are fainting left and right because of their rippling abs. 
I'm saying that because I'm mostly jealous. So they don't need an OnlyFans site to get their pecs out. They've got, anyway, my point being <laughs> that I have a niche. I think the niche is just people that find me amusing and I help distract you through a row. And that's really all you're looking for. You're not looking for platitudes and someone to be bombastic and tell you how amazing you are. You just want someone that's going to keep you company for half an hour and then you can maybe have a chuckle. You can maybe go, oh, another Jad joke. And then go, oh, is he a good top Bon Jovi? Yeah, he does. That's what I figure. Let me know if it's any different to that. Anyway, right. We're done with the main session. We're done with the cool down. Hopefully you can join me for a little bit of stretching. Now you have two options here. Option one, stretch it on. Look at his little grumpy face. Nobody bought him anything for his birthday, did they? Or you can join me and I'm gonna stretch in and around the rowing machine. This is better if you don't have a stretching mat nearby or whatever, or if you've got glass on the floor or cats attacking you. So, start off with hamstrings, okay? So put both feet back in the straps, keep them a little bit loose, legs nice and straight. Don't lock your knees, but put your hands in the air and fold forwards, okay? So I've still got a little bit of a soft my legs are straight, but there's a little bit of a soft bend to them. I don't have my knees pointing downwards, okay? Um, which sometimes I see that from a rowing stroke point of view, where you see people rowing and they get to the back and because they're tugging themselves forwards and they're wobbling all over the place. In fact, the Fit app was awful for that. Hopefully they've got, they've removed the, uh, the woman who's doing the technique, technique number one on the Fit app. I've got a video up here slagging it off to be honest, but, um, you see her doing it and her legs bounce backwards so they, they bow as she gets to the back of the stroke because her knees come all the way down and I'm like, oh, you're going to snap in half. Anyway, so, right, next. <laughs> uh, what way do I want to do this? I've got to go there. Right, sorry, do glutes. Sorry, I'm so stupid, aren't I? I can't even work out what leg I've got to do to face you. So put one leg up on the rail like this. We get a nice dirty calf from doing this. Put your other foot over your knee so that the heel sits in the click of your knee. Hi, the click of your knee. Bring this knee over so you've got a straight line between your face, your knee, and your foot. I'm old Scottish. Hold this knee in place like that. Rotate round. Hold on to the back of the machine and you should feel a wee stretch right down here on your glutes. Hi, right here. <laughs> it's going to be people with pitchforks outside. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleasantly Scottish. Pleasantly. I'm quite happily Scottish, but I'm still going to get assaulted from a poor Scottish accent. You should get a wee stretch down here into your glutes is all I'm saying. So right here, you should feel it radiating. Radi See, I wish I'd find that word ages ago. But radiating up from your glutes and you kind of feel it kind of come around. It's really quite good, especially in today's session, it's quite a lot of hard pushing. Now I'm gonna, bye bye, I'm gonna turn around and face the other way here. Um, so the same thing, bring your knee across and then rotate round. I only hold on to the back of the machine for stability because I'm quite unstable. You know what it is? You know what it, you know what it is? I've just remembered what it is. It's Friday. So I've gone a little bit loopy on a Friday. And why do I go loopy on a Friday? Did you answer? It's like Dora the Explorer. Why did I go loopy on a Friday? <laughs> now that's more like uh, Mr. Rogers, isn't it? Um, because it's Spaghetti Bonnie's day. Right, let's move on to our quads. Um, right, so I'll explain the Spaghetti Bolognese thing if you don't know about it. Uh, I rest one hand on the monitor for stability because otherwise I fall over and then I flick one foot up so that my heel comes behind me and then it lightly grazes my backside. <laughs> and then I hold it in place with my other hand and I try and not fall over. Okay, and this creates the stretch down my quads. If you don't know what I'm on about, if you listen to the podcast, please have a look at the video and you'll see this. I don't want you to be, I don't know, standing upside down with your head inside a fridge, trying to go, what's he on about? Um, don't know why a fridge came to that, but yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, fellas, ch change legs. Um, uh, Julie, my amazing wife, and I uh, have been living together, oh, it's gonna fall, have been living together for almost 23 years now. Uh, no, 22 years. And every Friday night where possible, apart from like holidays or going out for a night or whatever, um, every Friday night we've had spaghetti bolognese because we're such creatures of comfort and habit and stuff. Um, and it just it is Spagwell Friday, it's what we do. Um, and so it's a Friday, so that means today I get a nice big plate of spaghetti bolognese. And as being I'm kind of off my strict 
monk like if I, sorry we'll talk about this in a second let's do hip flexors next so uh, one foot in front of you so that your knee is right above your ankle got a nice 90 degree angle there and the back leg is behind you stranger because it's back and again 90 degree angle and then uh, with a good posture sink your body forwards so that you open up your back leg and you close off your front leg what you do with your toes is up to you I prefer having my toes on the ground and my heel up in the air that gives me a better stretch into my hip flexor some people find it easier to put the toes on the ground in order to get a stretch into the hip flexor I don't no 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 I find toes up gives me a much better stretch answers on a postcard as to why that's happening or answers from a osteopath <laughs> um, I don't know why I was talking about I was talking about spaghetti bolognese and I went into somewhere else and I can't remember why creature habit it's us totally forgot do you remember you let me know <laughs> anyway well, let's change legs <laughs> but you can tell I've got a little bit loopy oh it was the eating thing wasn't it yeah yeah uh, because there's no races or anything coming up and yeah definitely up on my toes um, and because I'm trying to kind of build, build a little bit of muscle kind of stuff I'm actually eating food in order to give myself, myself the calories and the energy to be able to do this stuff because I spoke to a nutritionist uh, and he was the one that said you know what maybe the reason you don't have energy when you're training and stuff is because you're not putting in enough fuel to your body and we kind of went through my fitness pal in true form <laughs> I was including exercise, I was burning about three and a half thousand calories a day. I was eating about 2,000 calories a day. You do the maths. So there's no wonder my body was... And maybe that's why I'm so like, yay, because I finally got energy in my body again. Right, we're going to do shoulders next. Hand straight out in front of you. Hiya. And then, uh, hiya, pals. And then across your body. And then use your other arm uh, to kind of pull it up against you. Um, and yeah, pull it up against you. That makes sense, doesn't it? And that creates the stretch. My hiya pals thing is uh, every year we go to Panto. Hopefully you know what Panto is. I think I've said the story before, so forgive me and I'll make it quick. Um, and the one we go to, the guy that plays like buttons and whatever, the, uh, if you don't know what Panto is, take a look at it. Um, but yeah, uh, it's the same guy, Johnny Mac, who's very, very funny. And we met him once and he was lovely, a really nice guy, really great to the kids and whatever. Um, but he always comes on and he goes, hiya pals. But then I think everyone does, because we went to see a different panto we went to see a different one in motherwell and the guy came on and went hiya pals and i'm like oh that's not your line you're copying but apparently that's just what they do in panto i never went to panto when i was young or at least i don't remember it i was speaking to my sister about this uh, the amazing pamela um it's her full name um uh yeah and i was saying did i ever go to panto when i was young and she's like i don't think so 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 i went to my first panto when i was like 42 or something so a little tiny little violin <laughs> Uh, right, let's do uh, forearms next. Put your hands together in front of your face. Hi, hello, hi, hello. And then pushing your hands together, bring them down in front of your body. Um, and so my thumbs and I kind of sternum height. Push your hands together and you'll find that your wrists and forearms will get a nice little stretch from doing this. If you've got a wobbly shoulder angle like I have, try and fix that. Sorry, I mean, podcast people for you guys and girls and dogs and cats that are listening. Because um, you never know, maybe you put my podcast on to keep the cats and dogs company throughout the day. That'd be very nice, wouldn't it? The cats would like it. The sound of my voice and whoosh, they'd be like, ooh. Um, yeah, apologies that I'm talking about things that uh, only video viewers can see. But that's what you get for listening to the podcast. But most of this, 99% of the stuff that I talk about, I'm hoping makes sense when it comes to the podcasts. It's just times like this. And then all you have to do is jump online and take a look at this and you'll go, oh, that totally wasn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> The worst part is, there's times like this when I actually find myself funny. Because then I'm never going to stop. Let's do, what do we do next? Biceps. So, uh, you're going to pretend you're a ski jumper here. So, ski jump. Wee, and then rotate your thumbs outwards. And then that um, stretches the long head of your bicep. It also contracts your triceps, which is why we do our triceps last. But there we go. So, we're, we're Eddie the Eagle Edwards. We're ski jumping. And it's kind of a good amount of kind of tension you're doing rotating around in order to get that stretch and kind of goes through your shoulders and your chest and stuff as well so hopefully it's a nice stretch to do if you have a different way to stretch your biceps then please do um, this is just pretty handy I like this one because um, it just feels like it's more of a compound stretch uh, and finally we're going to do triceps so put one hand up in the air but then it gets bored and it falls down your back and touches your spine and then you use your other hand to help your elbow up because your elbow's a little bit lazy or tight in my case um, and you help it back and point to the sky Point, reach for the sky. See, I like the, the Lightyear film, the, the sequel um, one, Lightyear. I thought it was quite good. I fell asleep during it, but I thought it was quite good. I'm kind of, I don't know why, but animation, pretty much every time I go and see an animated movie, I fall asleep at one point. I don't know why. There's very few that I've made it all the way through. Swap arms. Um, I'm trying to think what the last 
What was the last one animated film I went to see that I didn't fall asleep on? Even um, actually Wakanda Forever, uh, which I really liked, really enjoyed, I fell asleep from that as well. Maybe I'm just, I, along with the dad jokes, I'm just turning into that kind of dad type that I now go to the cinema for a snooze. Um, Sunday afternoons you'll find me with a, a newspaper open across it. Sorry, we're done stretching. <laughs> newspaper open across my face. <laughs> as I have a, my 40 winks, as my, my uh, dad would have said. Oh, don't really talk about my dad much because I lost him when, when I was so young, but that kind of be, that got me right in the bits, just thinking about that, it's 40 winks. But yeah. Anyway, right, oh, see, it's like, um, it's like an episode of MASH, isn't it? Where it goes from, hey, comedy, comedy, to mm, modeling. Um, yeah, suddenly I've been all joking around and then suddenly I remembered my dad and suddenly went, oh, and then I'm starting to think about my mum. I'm like, oh, so sorry, we've ended up in a downer. Sorry, folks. <sighs> it was all going so well. So do you remember the hashtag? Let's go back to that. Do you remember the hashtag? So if you don't, then you're going to have to go back to the end of the third interval to in that rest period and you'll find out what the hashtag was. Um, otherwise, uh, well, there's no otherwise because that's what you have to do. Um, thank you so much for, really seriously, thank you for so much for putting up with me, especially on days like this where someone just seems to have let go of the leash and I'm just going, ah! and it's hard to get me back. But it's all because of spaghetti bolognese, the magical power. Oh, the magical powers of spaghetti bolognese. Could you... Just, yeah, it's incredible. It should be, there should be a book written about it. It should be like Wizard's Book, Harry Potter and the Spaghetti Bolognese. <gasps> Somebody make that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, in fact, there's nothing else I can say after Harry Potter and the Spaghetti Bolognese, is there? So thank you so much for putting up with me watching this one and rowing along. Please leave me some kind of comment. Tell me to shut up or whatever, all right? And uh, no matter what, look after yourselves. I hope that you're enjoying this plan. Um, I'm off to have Harry Potter and the Spaghetti Bolognese. Take care, be well, bye-bye.